NASA has detected a hazardous object hot linked towards our planet. What kind of object? Well, it's a 1500 feet wide asteroid. NASA says the asteroid is traveling at a speed of over 77,000 kilometers per hour and this is said to be the closest approach by an asteroid towards Earth. In a cosmic tale from thousands of years ago, an asteroid zooming through the celestial expanse made a grand entrance, colliding with Earth. The aftermath? A dramatic upheaval, wiping out over 70% of life and spelling doom for the mighty dinosaurs. Fast forward to today, and the ever insightful Neil deGrasse Tyson is raising eyebrows with a prediction another asteroid rendezvous with Earth, mere years away. Brace yourself for a cosmic collision course set to unfold 13 years from now. What havoc will this celestial encore wreak on our planet? Join us in this captivating video expedition as we delve into Tyson's forecast, pondering if our species is hurtling toward an apocalyptic finale. This is Reveal the Mystery. If you are curious to learn mysteries of the world, space and beyond, consider subscribing. If you've had any interest in space science and astronomy, chances are you've encountered the name Neil deGrasse Tyson. A prominent figure in astrophysics and the broader scientific community, Tyson, born on October 5, 1958, is an American astrophysicist, author, and science communicator. He pursued his education at Harvard University, the University of Texas at Austin, and Columbia University. From 1991 to 1994, Tyson served as a postdoctoral research associate at Princeton University. Subsequently, he joined the Hayden Planetarium as a staff scientist and the Princeton faculty as a visiting research scientist and lecturer. In 1996, Tyson assumed the role of director at the Planetarium, overseeing its $210 million reconstruction project completed in 2000. Since then, he has continued as the director of the Hayden Planetarium at the Rose Center for Earth and Space in New York City, part of the American Museum of Natural History. Tyson founded the Department of Astrophysics in 1997 and has been a research associate in the department since 2003. Born in Manhattan as the second of three children in a Catholic family in the Bronx, Tyson's passion for astronomy ignited at the age of nine when he visited the Sky Theater of the Hayden Planetarium. He fondly recalls that his interest in the universe began during this transformative period of high school. At 14, Tyson received a scholarship from the Explorers Club of New York to witness the June 1973 total solar eclipse. His deep-rooted fascination with astronomy led him to earn a BA degree in physics at Harvard College in 1980 and pursue graduate studies at the University of Texas at Austin, where he obtained an MA degree in astronomy in 1983. These experiences laid the groundwork for Tyson's influential role in educating the general public about science and astronomy. To grasp what he's saying about the asteroid that might hit Earth soon, let's first understand what asteroids are in simpler terms. Asteroids are like rocky leftovers from when our solar system formed billions of years ago. Think of them as bits and pieces floating around in space. They're not smooth like planets because they don't have enough gravity to pull themselves into round shapes. Instead, they come in different shapes and sizes, ranging from tiny pebbles to huge rocks. Most asteroids orbit the Sun and hang out in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. They're believed to be remnants from the dust and gas cloud that swirled around when our solar system was born. Some bits didn't join together to make planets and stayed as smaller leftover pieces, now known as asteroids. There are different types of asteroids based on what they're made of. Carbonaceous asteroids are common and rich in carbon, possibly holding clues about the origins of life. Silicate asteroids are rocky, like Earth's crust, and often have metal deposits. Metallic asteroids are rare and mostly made of iron and nickel, looking like big chunks of metal. While some asteroids follow predictable paths and don't pose much risk, others, known as near-Earth objects (NEOs), could potentially cross Earth's orbit. Astronomers keep a close eye on these NEOs 
tracking them and assessing if they might collide with Earth. They're developing plans to deflect them if necessary. Why do we care about asteroids? Well, they're like time capsules, holding ancient materials from when our solar system formed. Studying them helps us learn how planets and life came to be. They could also be valuable resources for the future, containing minerals and water ice that we might use for space exploration and settling on other planets. Now, scientists are saying that a 370-meter-wide asteroid has been circling Earth for a while, and there's enough evidence to suggest it might collide with us. Though it would need a couple of specific events to happen for this collision, scientists warn that if it did occur, a large part of North America could be seriously damaged. The space rock called Apophis 99942 is known as a near-Earth asteroid. In 2004, scientists got a bit worried when they thought there was a 3% chance it might hit Earth in 2029. But as scientists studied it more, they found out it would go through a gravitational keyhole, a small space that changes how things are pulled by gravity. This made them think the asteroid might hit on April 13th, 2036. However, now they believe it's very unlikely to hit in 2036, and they're looking at the year 2068 with a really small one in 150,000 chance. Even though Apophis probably won't hit the ground, famous astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson talked about what might happen if it did. In a talk at a university in 2008, Dr. Tyson said it could cause big damage, maybe even wipe out the whole west coast of North America. He pointed out that it's tough to know exactly where the asteroid will go because measuring it is hard. While they're sure it won't directly hit Earth and will get closer than satellites, there's a 600-mile area called the Keyhole. If Apophis goes through the center of this keyhole, it could hit Earth 133 years later. Recent research on the keyhole found that it's just a bit over 300 meters wide, not giving much room for Apophis to go through. If the asteroid, sped up by going through Earth's air, goes through the center of the keyhole, it would dive into the Pacific Ocean, reaching a depth of three miles. This would cause a huge explosion and make a hole in the Pacific that's three miles wide. In the event of an asteroid impact, as explained by Tyson, a tsunami with a 50-foot height would emanate from the impact location. Tyson clarifies that oceans resist having voids, so when the collapsed three-mile-high wall falls back into the hole, it rises forcefully into the atmosphere, subsequently falling back and causing the ocean to cavitate again. This cycle, lasting about 50 seconds, could pose disastrous consequences especially for Malibu beaches, facing a substantial tsunami. Unlike the Indonesian tsunami, which was a single deep wave, this initial wave relies on a water supply and goes only about a quarter of a mile before being drawn back for the next wave. The issue arises as items on the coastline get pulled back into the sea, only to be brought back with the subsequent tsunami. Tyson predicts that all the million-dollar homes in Malibu would be carried out to sea and returned, albeit in altered forms. Artificial structures like houses and factories would be transformed into a force that cleanses the entire west coast of North America with sand-blasting intensity. Tyson indicates that on April 12, 2029, the world would learn if the asteroid had passed through keyholes, offering North Americans seven years to find new homes. Despite the alarming lecture, scientists later deemed the chance of Apophis passing through the tiny keyhole in 2008 as highly improbable. NASA reaffirmed in 2008 that the likelihood of Apophis impacting Earth in 2036 was 1 in 45,000. By February 2014, the JPL Century Risk Table estimated the odds of an impact on April 12, 2068 as 1 in 150,000. Key facts about the asteroid include concerns in December 2004 when early observations suggested a 2.7% chance of it hitting Earth on April 13, 2029. Subsequent observations provided more accurate predictions, eliminating the possibility of an impact in 2029. Until 2006, 
there remained a slim chance that Apophis, during its 2029 close encounter with Earth, might pass through a gravitational keyhole, potentially leading to a future impact in 2036. This possibility warranted a level 1 on the Torino impact hazard scale until August 2006, when the probability of Apophis passing through the keyhole was deemed very small, resulting in a downgrade to zero on the Torino scale. By 2008, the keyhole had been determined to be less than one kilometer wide. During its most concerning period, Apophis achieved the highest rating ever on the Torino scale, reaching level four on December 27, 2004. Preliminary observations by Goldstone Radar in January 2013 effectively ruled out the possibility of an Earth impact by Apophis in 2036. As of May 6, 2013, the possibility of Apophis impacting Earth on April 13, 2036 was dismissed. By March 2021, six other asteroids had a higher cumulative Palmo technical impact hazard scale than Apophis, and none of them had a T-level above zero. On average, an asteroid of Apophis's size, approximately 370 meters, is expected to collide with Earth once in about 880,000 years. Observations in 2020 by the Subaru Telescope confirmed predictions related to the Yarkovsky effect made by David Vrublevsky in 2015. Goldstone radar observed Apophis from March 3rd to 11, 2021, contributing to a more accurate understanding of its orbit. On March 25, 2021, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory declared that Apophis poses no risk of impacting Earth in the next 100 years. The uncertainty in the 2029 approach distance has been significantly reduced, enhancing predictions for future approaches. The Century Risk Table estimates that an impact by Apophis would release kinetic energy equivalent to 1,200 megatons of TNT. In comparison, the Chicxulub impact, causing the dinosaur mass extinction event, released about 100 million megatons, or approximately 100 teratons. The specific consequences of an impact would rely on the asteroid's composition, location, and angle of impact. Although an impact would be devastating to an area covering thousands of square kilometers, long-lasting global effects, such as an impact winter, are unlikely. The B612 Foundation's 2008 assessment of Apophis identified a narrow risk corridor for a potential 2036 Earth impact spanning southern Russia, North Pacific, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, northern Colombia, Venezuela, and the Atlantic near Africa. A hypothetical impact in Colombia or Venezuela could result in over 10 million casualties. Deflection strategies proposed by NASA, ESA, and others include gravitational tractors, kinetic impact, and nuclear bombs. Various countries explored mission designs to redirect Apophis, considering methods like impact a spacecraft with a solar sail or Russian ICBMs. While Apophis's direct collision is unlikely, the proposal to map the inside of problematic asteroids like Apophis emerged in 2022. Despite dismissing Apophis's direct impact, the ongoing concern focuses on the multitude of asteroids passing close to Earth, with past collisions causing extinction events and injuries, their effects depending on factors like mass and velocity. This video highlights crucial factors related to asteroids, emphasizing the importance of mass in categorizing them. Different types exhibit varying densities, affecting their survival during atmospheric entry. The speed of an asteroid influences impact intensity, and the impact location determines observed destruction. While most asteroids may fall into uninhabited areas, mitigating the risk of collisions with populated regions is a priority for space agencies like NASA. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye.